The company Funny Playing has become synonymous with great IPS kits for the Game Boy consoles. They have pretty much made a kit for almost every iteration. There is one however that hasn't gotten the IPS treatment just yet. That is until now. While the DMG is no stranger to IPS mods, having received several revisions of the RIPS kits, this will be the first one from Funny Playing. So how does it stack up to the current competition and is it worth your hard earned dollars? Let's find out. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. So here we have yet another DMG IPS kit. This one, however, I'm excited to say is from Funny Playing. Now while the DMG has had several IPS kits made for it in the past, they each had some flaws, but I'll get into that later in the video. To start, I'm going to walk you through the contents of this Funny Playing kit and then show you how to install it. There are some really cool features on this kit that we haven't yet seen on a DMG backlight mod and I'm pretty excited to share them with you. So stay tuned all the way to the end of the video for a rundown of all these great features and how it compares to the other IPS kits on the market for the DMG. So I ordered this kit directly from Funny Playing but uh, vendors such as Handheld Legends and Retro Modding should be carrying these very soon. As with all Funny Playing kits, this one for the DMG comes in a hard plastic Pelican-like case which ensures everything is safe and intact when it arrives at your doorstep. Alright, let's go ahead and open it up. So here's everything all laid out. You'll notice that this kit looks very similar to the RIPS kits we've seen before on this channel. If you haven't seen my RIPS backlight videos, you can check out the latest version 3 by clicking on the card at the top of your screen or in the link in the description below. Anyway, let's start by going over the items that we won't be using from this kit first. So here we have the foam gasket. Now, we will be using this partially, but not as intended. You'll understand what I mean when we go through the installation. And if you're a regular on this channel, you know I just really don't like these adhesive gaskets, primarily because it makes this mod permanent and non-serviceable. It is nearly impossible to remove the LCD without damaging it if you use this gasket as intended. Next are these four spacers. These would go on the screw posts around the LCD area to ensure that the PCB remains level. Now, we won't be needing these because we printed ourselves an aligning bracket which was designed by Retromodding that accomplishes the same thing. Now, this aligning bracket did not ship with my Funny Playing kit, but I'm assuming once Retromodding starts selling these DMG IPS kits themselves, they will come bundled with it. Alright, so next is the IPS panel. This appears to be the same one from the Game Boy Pocket kit we just installed a couple episodes ago. I have a link to that video if you're interested in the description below. So here we have the ribbon cable. Again, this looks very similar to the Game Boy Pocket one. And like with all funny playing kits, this is really where all the magic happens. So next here we have the glass screen lens. Now this is unique in that it has a slightly larger display window than a traditional screen lens. And that's because the kit produces a slightly larger image. Funny Playing advertises it as an 11% larger picture than the original. So that's really awesome and I really look forward to seeing how that looks after the install. And last of course here we have the PCB which replaces the original front PCB on the DMG console. Now you'll also notice that this looks very similar to the RIPS version 3 kit and instead of having a control wheel like in the RIPS DMG3 kit, this actually has more of a toggle switch which you can toggle up and down and also push in. Other than that, there's really nothing interesting going on with this PCB. It's very simple and again, resembles very much the RIPS version 3 kit. All right, so that's everything in the kit. Let's dive right into the installation. To start, go ahead and disassemble your DMG unit. My DMG already has been disassembled because I didn't have a donor unit and instead had to scavenge various parts from my other consoles. If you want a detailed instruction on how to disassemble the DMG, click on either of my RIPS modded DMG videos, which are linked in the description below. Now let's proceed to making the necessary modifications to the front shell housing. Grab your flush cutters and snip the two screw posts above the LCD window using a craft knife to make sure it's nice and flush. 
Next, we need to enlarge the LCD window to accommodate the larger image that the Funny Playing Kit outputs. It just needs to be slightly larger. With a ruler, make some guidelines using a Sharpie. This doesn't have to be exact, I'm just sort of eyeballing it. Once marked, I again use my ruler to help guide my craft knife while I score the plastic. Go over each line several times with your craft knife until we have a deep enough cut. Now use your flush cutters to make a small snip at the edge of each scored line. Grab some needle nose pliers and slowly fatigue the plastic along the scored line until it snaps off. Smooth things over with your craft knife and finish things off with a file. Next we're going to apply the foam gasket to the shell. The best way to align it is to use the cutout for the LED post and the upper left screw post as a guide. The purpose of applying the gasket is to help keep dust from getting underneath the screen lens. We will not be removing the release paper on the LCD side of the foam gasket. Again, do not peel the release paper, leave it on the foam gasket. Great, that's all the shell modifying we need to do. Now let's prep the IPS panel. Let's first place the panel into the 3D printed bracket by first setting it into the bottom lip, making sure the connector is positioned correctly inside the bracket towards the back of the IPS panel. Now let's carefully connect the ribbon cable to the IPS panel and tape it in place with some capped on tape. Great, our IPS display is prepped and ready for installation. The last thing we need to do before we can actually put everything together is prep the front PCB. The only thing we need to do here is solder in the speaker. Now I have a speaker here ready to go but you may need to desolder yours from your existing donor DMG console. Just solder it in place like so. And now our PCB is prepped and ready to go. Now it's time to put it all together. Go ahead and place the IPS panel with the bracket into the front shell housing along with all the buttons and membranes. Followed by the PCB next and secure it in position with the 8 remaining screws. Connect the IPS ribbon cable to the PCB and lock it in place. Next, connect the provided ribbon cable between the front and rear PCB with the metal connectors facing up. Sandwich it all together and button it up with the six remaining screws. And there it is, the Funny Playing IPS Modded DMG. So I want to discuss how this kit differs from other DMG IPS mods on the market. Right now, the only other primary competitor to the Funny Playing Kit is the RIPS version 3. These kits are both similar in that they fully replace the front PCB, however that's generally where the similarities end. The size of the image displayed is larger on the Funny Playing Kit at roughly 44 by 48.5 millimeters, while the RIPS version 3 is roughly 40 by 44 millimeters. Another advantage of the Funny Playing Kit is that it has 36 different color palettes compared to the 8 of the RIPS version 3 kit. The last and arguably biggest advantage of the Funny Playing Kit is the Retro Pixel Mode, which is a grid overlay that mimics the original Game Boy's dot matrix display. This is activated by pressing and holding in the multifunction toggle switch. The RIPS version 3 kit does not have this feature and I'm sure this is something that a lot of Game Boy enthusiasts will be looking for in a backlight LCD mod. Again, this is the same feature that was introduced in the Funny Playing IPS kit for the Game Boy Pocket. So to me it's fairly clear that the Funny Playing kit is the winner in terms of features. Now one of the biggest issues of the RIPS kits, both the version 2 and to a lesser extent in the version 3, was the button responsiveness. And I'm happy to say that the Funny Playing Kit has no issues with button responsiveness. Everything works as it should. The last thing I want to talk about is artifacting. 
If you remember from my episode on the Funny Playing IPS kit for the Game Boy Pocket, there are some issues with flickering dots and horizontal line artifacting during screen transitions. These were supposed to be corrected for the second batch of Game Boy Pocket ribbon cables, and I was assuming those corrections would be rolled into the DMG kits as well. Unfortunately, it appears as though these issues still persist. Now, just to be clear, these horizontal lines only appear to be present during the retro pixel mode only, and not during the standard non-pixelated mode, again, just like the Game Boy Pocket kit. So while it is disappointing that this wasn't corrected, to me it isn't a huge issue, and I think there's a lot of great things that this kit offers, which really outweigh the cons. Overall, I have to say I'm extremely happy with this kit, and I think it's currently the best option on the market if you're looking to backlight your DMG. So what did you think of this new IPS mod for the DMG? For those of you with the RIPS version 3, do you think you'll be changing over to this new funny playing kit? I'd be really interested to hear what you all think. Leave a comment below and let me know. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, we'll see you next time.